All right, so we're going to get into the first presentation for tonight. This one's a doozy. This is actually going to cover the REM tour website. REM, the actual band, musicians. Uh, well, Blake Lucchese actually developed their website. Blake is from a company called Bold Source, and they did the new tour site in Drupal, uh, and it's actually pretty, it's pretty clean design. Uh, so Blake is actually going to show us how that was even accomplished in Drupal, and he's actually going to go quite in depth. So a lot of you are going to get some pretty cool insight of uh, how to use Drupal, uh, some popular modules to build a website like this. So let's give a round of applause to welcome Blake Lucchese. full walkthrough of rebuilding the REM tour website. Uh, the website was built on five because <coughs> at the time it was April and still none of the modules were really ready for it. Uh, in addition, it uses panels, um, and panels is not get ready for six. So I have a full write-up on my website on how, like basically a full case study that I encourage you all to read afterwards or just as a reference for later. Basically goes over all the modules that I used, the approach that I took in creating the, the website, and uh, has some resources as well to uh, documentation and reference for later. So, if you go through here, uh, I have a module list right here. Good hand, man. Feed API. So, okay, so. I'll post a link to this on the, the groups.drupal.org website later on so you guys can all reference it, but you guys can write it down now if you can. Um, let's actually go to the website so you can take a, take a look. So Ethan and Sarah came to me asking to uh, put together a website for the new tour. And the basic idea behind, behind everything was that they needed to aggregate photos from each of the tour dates from Flickr. They wanted videos aggregated from each of the tour dates from YouTube. They wanted Twitter messages aggregated in real time during concerts, as well as blogs about different concerts uh, either before or afterwards. And so we needed to figure out a way that we could organize the data so that it's helpful and so that it'll be able to be used by the people throughout the world, basically. Um, a lot of so if you go down, you can see that this is the home page and it has different blocks uh, all across the site. The main one is the videos, the tweets, the photos. I believe there's a blog one at the bottom right here, yeah. So you can see there's a lot of content and obviously it was, we didn't expect that much content at the beginning. Um, but this is the home page and it aggregates all the data throughout the entire site. So it's basically all the most recent photos and videos <coughs> Twitter messages and blog posts, and there's a listing of all the tour dates on the right hand side. What kind of blogs are you Ethan, where are you aggregating the blogs from? Where are you aggregating the blog posts from again? Actually, Ethan's not here. Or that's Sean. Okay. I think it's Technorati. Okay, rumors, yeah. So it doesn't actually matter where, I guess, but uh, using the feed API module, it's, as long as you have an RSS feed that you can read, you can plug it into Drupal, and Drupal will create content from that RSS feed for you. And so that was a whole underlying technology that we used to create this whole site. Okay. Um, let's see, where should I start? Okay. So I guess. Looking at this, a lot of people that are new to Drupal are wondering, how do I make that, right? How, do, how would I get there with nothing, basically, right? So architecting the site took a lot of thought in terms of how we're gonna, how the content is related to one another, how I can make content related to a tour date, or how I can make sure that people could browse by tour dates, or different, like, simple simple things in terms of using, using the web, but something that when you architect, architect a Drupal site, it takes a lot of thought, I guess. Um, so basically all of the tour dates are taxonomy terms. Okay, so, right, that's a category, so that seems to make sense, but, you know. Okay, so those are taxonomy terms. Each of the videos, tweets, blogs, and the photos are all nodes, okay? 
Now, we created a different node type for each, obviously, node type. One is videos, node types, photos, node types, uh, tweets, node types, and blogs, node types. Okay? And let me log in here and show you. This isn't on the live side, this is my local machine, actually, that I developed on. So it doesn't have all the content that you see up there. Uh, if I go to categories, you'll see that I have tortoise as one of the taxonomy vocabularies. Okay, and then if I list the terms, you'll see that I have each of the tour dates as a, as a taxonomy term. Okay, what this provided the, the website is it's, it's a landing page so that if people wanted to view content from a particular um, tour date, they could actually see all the, all the content that's categorized under that tour date. So it seemed very semantic and, and to take that approach. Um, there may have been some issues about using panels in terms of how we can display the data properly, but panels solve a lot of those issues. Okay, so if we go to one of the pages, let's see. Okay. the other thing that you guys might not recognize or, or notice when you're using taxonomy is that there's a description field. Uh, if I click edit on the taxonomy term. Okay, so here's the taxonomy term page where you actually define which category you know, you're going to be using. Uh, we use the description field because in panels we can pull that description field out and display it when you're viewing that taxonomy. Okay. We'll, we'll show you that later, but that was an important aspect to being able to display a main piece of content for a particular tour date. Okay. Okay, another module that was uh, essential to creating the, the, whole, the whole website is the EM field module. It's the embedded media field module, okay? And what this module provides you is CCK fields that display YouTube videos, Flickr images, blip.tv videos, uh, basically any type of embedded media that you can grab from another source. All you need to do is type in a link to that video or photo, and this module will actually grab that data and display it alongside all the other data in that node, okay? So, let me go ahead and, and click on these. Okay, so I'll show you. Okay, if I play this, it's going to go through. Okay. If you go to the comment content list, I'm sorry, for those of you who haven't seen this, the, the, the admin menu, it's the module called admin underscore menu, and it provides you with an easy to use administration menu that makes browsing your admin pages a lot faster. Okay, so I think we've talked about that a couple times at the meetings. So I'm gonna go list all the content. And you'll see there's different video content types and there's different feed content types. And the feed content types we'll get to later, but for now I'll take a look at one of the video content types. Or one of the video nodes, sorry. This is a video node of the video content type. Clarify. Um, and you can see I have a YouTube video field that is provided by the EM field module. So all I did was, well I didn't do it, the feed API module did it, but it pasted that URL into that, that field for me and then it automatically displays the YouTube uh, video player for us. Okay. Has anybody lost so far? So this is automatically generated by that? Right. The, yeah. The feed API mapper module, which I have listed there too, will actually map different fields from your RSS feeds into fields in your CCK nodes. Okay, so having that, it allows you to take different content from an RSS feed like the author, the title, or in Flickr's case, maybe like the, the file URL or different stuff like that. You can actually map that into CCK fields. But as far as where you're displaying that YouTube video, is that being handled by panels? Because it's not? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that was the thick box. The, the, when it pops up into the gray screen, that's the thick box, mo thick box module, and that just loads to JavaScript. But as far as this works, displayed on the node that's being controlled in, in panels. Uh, right. So if I go to view this node, or are you talking about the? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This is actually just a regular node page. This right here. When so I'm I, yeah. it below that, below that other content that you had in the node body. That that was the question. So. Oh, okay. The other content that's below it, right here. Yeah, let's say you wanted to move that video somewhere else. Okay, this is just handled through uh, 
through CCK. Gotcha. So if, in the CCK admin field, let's see, content types, I'll list my content types, and you'll see that I have concert photos, videos, and stories. Let me click on edit for the video one, and then if you go to the display fields, uh, yeah, it doesn't show the body field, but that all the other text is just sent into the body field. If you were to go to your video content type, if you configure your YouTube video, that, that comes out of the embedded video bundle. Right. If you can configure how big you want the video display. Yeah, I played with this a lot. I was just curious how you're doing the display. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying, I guess my, my, my process on this is to go over with you guys how the site works, you know, what, what's going on, and then maybe we can do a build of that for the site, too. Can you uh, tell us what specific to five versus six? Yes. I want to say that the feed API mapper module is not ported to six yet, but I, I think a little bit of sponsorship or a little bit of time that's going to happen because the feed API module is updated for six. So, you know, just like Carrie said earlier, about 70 modules have just recently upgraded. I'm sure this one's coming soon. Uh, the other one was panels, right? So, panels isn't upgraded to six yet, and that's, as you'll see when we build out the site, pretty critical to allow us to display different node type views around different parts of the page. So yeah, that's why. And I don't believe the EM field, let me see. The EM field is not yet updated as well. So you can do what you can do. Um, okay. Let me see. Let's go through the rest of the site. Okay. So at the at the when we started this, we only planned to actually use this for the American tour, which was gonna be about ten or twelve dates. But things went really well, people really started using it a lot, and so they added all the European dates. So now the site's managing content from literally all around the world. Uh, people different that don't even speak English are, are able to use and can contribute to this website. Um, that's another important thing to think about too, is that no one's actually logging into this Drupal website to create content or to share their content. A lot of people are sending these videos and photos from their phones. So they don't even need to know what Drupal is, know how to use Drupal, know how to use any sort of content management system at all. All they're doing is sending the data to sources that they already use, like YouTube, like Flickr, and they're adding a special tag for each of those tour dates. Okay, and that's that's kind of how we want to do that with the, with the tagging. So every tour date has its own unique tag, like REM Vancouver, or REM uh, Germany, or REM Finland, whatever it is. So when people are contributing to these websites, all they're doing is tagging their content with this tag, and we're able to aggregate all of those, all that content. How do you, how do you keep out spam? There's no, chance of that. there's no, I mean, well, the upstream, the upstream data provider is taking care of that for them. Right. I mean, I mean yeah, but uh, uh, what YouTube would remove spam anyway. Well, yeah. what, theoretically, someone could tell us about it, so I'm tagging with one of these spam tags. That's what I'm getting. And then your picture would show up in the photo section. But. Right. That hasn't happened. Sean, have you heard anything happening with that? Any, any issues? It's, in terms of like managing the website, I think Ethan just adds the feeds and that's pretty much it. Ethan's pretty obsessive with looking at the content. Yeah. yeah. It's not applicable. So, <laughs> yeah. so if, you, uh, if you get something coming in, you can delete it as a note. But right, you can delete any of this content that comes in because it's just a note like any other note on your website. What if it comes back in through the feed, though? Yeah. Uh, leave it, well, you can unpublish it, right? And then the feed already thinks it's there, uh, right? Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Maybe I didn't go over the architecture well enough. I, does everybody kind of get the idea of, of what we did here and how it works? Any question about the theme? Did you use it as like a custom theme? Actually, this is the grid inspired theme. The only thing I did to this was swap out the header image. The grid inspired? It's, uh, it, actually, at the bottom, if you go to the bottom, there's a link to a good focus theme. Um, it's actually based on WordPress theme that was ported over to Drupal, and the Drupal version is called uh, Grid Inspired. So you can download that. I, I think I've made, maybe on the node template, I might have like 
arrange something differently, but th there's basically no theming on this website at all. Um, you can see it's just a little bit of color, and then all the photos and videos really do everything for it. So, uh, any other questions before I start building? Um, the fields that you have to write, or mm -hmm. can be any fields, or they could be any fields. Uh, the one thing I did have to write for this that was not you know, downloaded was uh, the Flickr mapper. There was no uh, mapping include file for the feed API mapper module so that it would recognize the, the Flickr fields, but the YouTube one came automatically. I, I submitted a patch for the Flickr one, so I assume they might have bundled that now. I don't, I don't know if they have yet, but I, if, you, if you can't find it, let me know and I can, I can give that to you. Uh, so yeah, you, you sh I know you can map taxonomy terms, so you can map like uh, tags from other websites into taxonomies on your website. That's one thing that I know will happen. Uh, and you can obviously map most of it back to the body field. Um, obviously, as there's, as there's more uh, support for the map and module, there's, it'll support more, more fields. So you have a methodology in which users can vote on the favorite videos? Or uh, actually, there's none of that done. There's no favorites, no sort of, there's no interaction with the website other than posting a comment and contributing content through these third party providers. And that's all. Right. So you're able to basically piece this whole thing together without writing any custom code except for the Flickr mapper module? The Flickr mapper and one other piece, which is about 15 lines, and I, I have it on the website if you want to download it. Uh, the, 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 that's kind of like the, the whole binding part is that when you create a feed node, it creates new nodes based on what items are in that feed, right? What we needed to do was make it so that those feed items got categorized in the same category as the parent node. Because that's that, like, so we create a new feed node for every tour date, and we need to make sure that the items that that feed is bringing in are categorized under that tour date. So I wrote uh, a quick little module that uses Node API to insert that taxonomy term. Um, Did you mention Tag Morality? If you use this method to pull in blog posts, anything, anything that has an RSS feed, you can use this for. So, feed API module is very, very well written. Any other questions in the back? All right, cool. So I installed the modules earlier today. I downloaded them again. Okay. So I'm sure everyone here has installed Drupal before, but just in case you haven't, Here's my Drupal folder with all the files that come in the downloaded zip file. Uh, I place all the modules that I use and the sites all, uh, and then I make two new folders here called modules and themes. And I downloaded all of the contributed modules from drupal.org and place them in this folder, as opposed to the modules folder here. And there's many reasons for that, but just follow this methodology. Uh, so here you can see I have the CCK module, the EM field, feed API, feed API mapper. Feed API taxonomy is the module that I wrote, the, the quick taxonomy term uh, module. Let me go over that if you would like to. And then panels, path auto. Path auto is only used so that when content was contributed, we were able to have clean URLs so that it didn't say slash node, slash 10, slash node, slash 11. It had you know, the title. Uh, it would work really good too for the taxonomy terms because we're using taxonomy pages, so Path Auto overwrites the taxonomy landing pages uh, with the titles of the taxonomy terms instead of taxonomy slash term slash number one or slash number two or slash number three. Uh, the thick, by, thick box module provides the little JavaScript pop ups like you saw earlier, and token is required by the Path Auto module. So I have to create my first account. And I'll type my name. Let's see how fast we can do this. Without confusing everybody. Okay, so our site is installed. We have nothing on it. I am going to First step is I'm going to install some of the modules that we need here. Install the CCK module, which allows us to create new content types. 
as well as additional fields for each of those content types. And if anybody has questions, just stop me as I go and I'll, I'll uh, answer those. I'm going to enable the embedded image field module and the embedded media field module. And the embedded video field module. So the embedded media field module supplies the embedded image field and the embedded video field as well. So when you install this, you need all three of those installed, one for the images and one for the videos. Okay, and I'll add the generic text one as well, even though we probably won't use it. These are all part of the basic installation? Uh, no, these are part of the modules that I downloaded. So oh. CCK and then EM field provides all the, the modules right in here in the CCK box. Okay. Turn color off, I don't need that. Taxonomy is on, that's right. Yeah, yeah don't forget that one. Right, so, so, that's on. so if you want a full volume, you can just check it out. If I wanted to what? If you wanted to include a full. Right, check the pull module here. Right. And it'll install, install the pull module, and then we could add polls if we wanted to. Right. If we wanted to add voting on the photos and on the, uh, the content, we would use the voting API module and the five star module. Okay. The, the poll module is a little different. That provides you with a node to actually do a poll where you ask you know, different questions and then people can provide answers to those questions like yes or no, I agree, I don't agree, whatever it is. Uh, the five star and the voting API module allows you to vote on particular nodes that are on the website. So here we have different nodes throughout the site that people would be voting on whether they like them or not. So that's, that's an instance where we use the voting API module and the five star module. And both of those, I can tell you, are available for Drupal 6. And they, they work very well. Um, OK. The feed API, uh, we will get there a little bit later. Let's do this stuff first. We'll turn path auto on. Um, actually, we'll turn that on afterwards so you can see the paths we get before we turn it on. Taxonomy context. This module provides a block with all the taxonomy terms so you can browse through them. So uh, the, the menu on the right hand side will be provided by the taxonomy context of modules. Okay. And we'll create, we'll use the views module. Okay. So the first step, we're going to add some new content types that will support our videos and our images. Okay. Content types. Add a content type. We want to show the taxonomy breadcrumb because this content is going to have one taxonomy term so that will relate it back to the, the show that it was from. So this will provide the breadcrumbs for us. So that's already handled. The content name is going to be video, and the type will be video with lowercase words. If you read the help text, it'll kind of explain why they should be lowercase words. Description. Okay. That was the taxonomy context module. Right. Okay. By default, we want it published. Promoted the front page. Doesn't really matter because we're going to change the front page of the panels module. So we'll leave it checked. It doesn't matter. Publish is important because as the feed API module grabs those nodes from outside, it's going to you know, publish them as opposed to them being uh, not published. So as you asked earlier, you know, what if people are spamming it? You can have them not published and then review them and manually publish those if you wanted to. Okay. And commenting will leave read right so that people can leave comments. Save content type. Okay, now when you click on the video content type, we're going to manage the fields. We're going to add a new field for the video. Okay, the name is going to be video. And we now have two more options available to us, third party video. So we'll create that field. And it's really nice because you can choose which providers you want to use. Uh, so it recognizes URLs from all of these providers, which you can either turn on or enable or disable at, at your liking. So we we'll use YouTube. And this is also nice, it allows you to change the, the width of the video, the settings. So we'll leave those for now, but if you wanted videos to fit into a certain size, like we did on the home page, 
uh, we can we can do that pretty easily. Autoplay also here's the thumbnail. You can either require that there's a video or not, but save videos. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So just to test this out, let's, let's create a new video. Okay, so I'm not sure this is. I'm going to take the URL of this and give it. Uh, This will help you to see how things are going on without the feed API module doing it for you. So let's go ahead and hit submit. And there we go. So that's the beauty of the EM field module. It gives you that pretty easily right out of the box. Uh, if you go to the home page, you can see that there's a teaser and it has the video as well. Let's go back to our two separate views. You could actually do one view if you wanted to that has two arguments. One of the arguments would be which content type you wanted to, to display, and the other argument would be the taxonomy term to filter by, but to be simple, we're just going to create two different views for now. Uh, and you might be able to, you, you should pick up on be able to see that uh, Photos, okay, so we're going to provide a block, and it's going to have a list view, okay? So the list view is going to give us um, unordered list items, each item of that list is going to be a particular node that's returned by this view. Okay. Is everybody here pretty familiar with the views module? Is there any, anybody I should kind of talk more about it before? Okay. Um, 
So the title is going to be photos. And we can limit it to, say, 50 notes per block. Um, if you have another site, you might want to set it differently. Uh, now, for the list view type, we need to select which fields we want to show up in our list view. Okay? So here we can show that we want our photo field to be shown. Okay? So we'll add that field. Okay. Um, option, we can choose which size image we want. So for the home page, we use the thumbnail. Um, and here we go to filters. Let's go to filters first. So filters are important for views. They're like hidden arguments, I guess. Uh, so what the views module does is it provides you a way to list all the content on your website, right? And by default, it gives you every piece of content, whether it's a node type of video or photo, it's unpublished, it's not published, it doesn't matter who, you, what user created it. Every single piece of content on your website is returned by a view. And what you do to set, the, set all your views up, basically, is you set up filters. So you filter out content that you don't want to show up, or that you do want to show up, okay, based on the arguments that we set here. Okay, so the first filter I always use is node published. And so I want to make sure that I'm showing a list of nodes that are, are published content that are for you know, our users to see. So you can see node published equals yes. And then what we'll do is we'll set a node type filter. So we only want to show people the photo node types in this view. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? All of this is within a block. Right, so we're only going to create a small block that we can place anywhere on the website. And our sort criteria is going to be the last time, or the created time for the node. So for this site, that makes sense. It's the, the most recent one goes to the top. You can sort it however else you want. Um, and when you sort, descending is most recent first, because time gets bigger as it is more near. So. Uh, okay, now back to the arguments. So right now our view will give us every single photo that's published on our website. Okay, what we want to be able to do is say we only want photos from this tour date or that tour date. And since we use the taxonomy module, we're able to easily filter those out. So let's use a taxonomy term ID, which might seem a little weird, but it's better that way because it's the number for the taxonomy term. And since we're using panels. Uh, to catch some of the arguments, it'll work better than typing an actual name for each of the each of the events. We can actually just use the number that comes up, and it'll automatically filter those out. Okay, so instead of manually specifying each each of the dates to, to create a new view for it. so we're going to add that argument. And since on the home page we want to display all the values, if we don't specify this argument, we want it to default to displaying all values. Okay. So there's a couple different settings. So if you have it set to return page not found, if, if this argument isn't supplied and you have the return page not found set, then you're going to have an error message that says page is not found. But if you have it set to display all values, it actually doesn't do any filtering at all. It just displays all the values that it would have displayed if the argument was not there. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? But wouldn't that show photos for future tour dates that aren't? Well, it's all photo content, right. right? So for the home page, we want all photo content. So since we're not going to specify any argument for the taxonomy term, it's just going to get us all the most recent content from throughout the whole site. The filters that he set below still apply. Yeah, the filters, the filters below still apply. Those will always apply. Yeah, as long as right. So you can reuse this block for the front and then reuse it again when you want to go. Right, right. So a lot of times you'll see is, is you know, if you're not really uh, familiar, you haven't really used this type of stuff before, uh, you'll create a new view for <coughs> this little piece of thing you want on your website, where in reality you could use a, maybe an argument or two and use just one view, which makes it, you know, managing your website becomes a lot easier later, or upgrading or creating themes for, you know, you can share a theme for the same view across multiple pieces. So using these arguments is really powerful. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create this view. Okay. And 
I'm going to clone it because the, the videos ones are pretty similar. Okay, we could go through the same steps again, but it basically just it copies all the settings from the other view, and now we're going to use that to create our new videos view. Okay, so everybody makes make sense. Everybody's just clone, just copy. So let's say videos. Okay, we can type the description, but we need to. We have a list view. It's going to be videos. Okay. The field is not going to be an image anymore, so let's delete this. Okay. And we're changing the video, the field to our video field. Okay, so let's add that field. And the filter is going to change to video. Other than that, they're exactly alike. So you can see by using another argument, we could have said, let's use an argument to specify the video type. And uh, the fields, since they both have different fields, we could have used both fields in the, in the view. So if it's a video you know, node, then it would have given us the video content field. If it was a photo node, it would have just given us the photo field because it doesn't have a video field, so it wouldn't even give it to us anyway. So, right, so does that, does that kind of make sense to everybody how you can use a single view to basically do what both of these views do? So this is about a good time to install the panels module. What does that do? The panels module allows you to arrange pieces of content on your website in different panels. Okay, so everyone's familiar with the block system in Drupal, right? You can add blocks to the sidebars. There's a sidebar over here for the first block to find, or a sidebar, a block over there. Uh, what panels does is it gives you the entire content area as a different set of regions that you can push content to. Uh, by default, it allows you to specify basically anything you want. Using the flexible layout, you can basically do anything you want. You can specify four columns, three columns, multiple rows. Uh, so any sort of block layout that you want for your content, you can, you can define using the panels module. Okay? In addition, the panels module gives you uh, a really cool feature called uh, well, the pages, right? So if you create a new panel page where you define a new URL, okay, so that people can access this panel, correct? So you can create a new URL called home, and you can set that as your default home page. Okay, and so that panel page will show up whenever somebody goes to you know slash home on your website. Okay. Um, <coughs> the other really cool feature is that you can override the node page or the taxonomy term page as well. So you can have different blocks show up next to your nodes. You can have the comments box show below your node or above your node. Uh, so it's really cool and you can we'll kind of get there, but it allows you to really flexibly lay out different content. Okay, so let's add that. Mm -hmm. When you download the Panels 2 module, it's there's quite a bit. So there's all the modules that come with the Panels 2 module. So for this, for any, anything that says legacy on it, you don't need to worry about. That's usually for the Panels 1 users to continue using Panels 1 style stuff. And anyone can, can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and click on Panel Pages, the Panels module, and the View Panes module. So the view pain, Views Panes module allows us to bring views into our panels and specify which arguments we want, or uh, it adds a lot of flexibility to that. So they're really well integrated. And if anyone has other questions about panels afterwards, uh, you can feel free to ask me. I can go over other different stuff. But for now, we're just going to use panels panes, panels module, and the views panes. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new home page like we discussed that will have our new views on it. Okay. So you'll see there's a new menu item here called Panels when you install the Panels module. And Panel Pages. And this will list all the pages that you've created using the Panels module. Okay. Now don't be confused, they're not nodes. Okay. These Panel Pages are not nodes. You may have seen on the other page earlier that there's a Panels Nodes module. And that will create nodes that are like panels, but they're not the same as the panels pages. Okay, and the major implication of this is that the panels pages will not be shown in your search index. Okay, so that's not treated like a node, like every other piece of content on your website is. This is meant more for like landing pages. If you're aggregating other content from your site, 
it's great to use a panel page, or like I said earlier, it's great for overriding you know, node pages or taxonomy term pages, like we'll do in a bit here. Okay, so let's add a panel page. And here's the flexible layout type. Uh, the other ones are predefined and they're, they're pretty good, but we'll use the flexible one really quick just to show you because it allows you to really do whatever you want. So the panel name is going to be home page. Our title is going to be welcome. And our path is going to be home. Okay, so let's save that and proceed. Here's where all the settings come in for the rows and columns. So you can give it a specific row width or a specific width and percentage or pixels. Uh, we'll do 100%. We're going to create a two row layout and we're going to have two columns on the first one. And it's going to be left and right. Okay, and then I know there's extra fields here, but let's go ahead and save this because as soon as we save it with two rows and two columns, it's going to reorganize this form for us and redisplay the right settings. Okay, so let's let's save this. Would you recommend that all the time when dealing with panels and pages? Oh, what's that? Uh, kind of doing some of the basic setup, saving, and coming back to see if your options change. Right. Yeah. I mean, panels is a really complex module. Uh, so is views, views two especially. Um, so, Carrie, do you have a suggestion? Yeah, uh, save all the time, especially yeah. views. Especially views when you get com com complex. There's so many tabs and things. Sooner or later, you will click something and lose right. 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If you hit of work. the backspace Excellent. key and you're yeah. not in the text field. Yeah. That's what gets me all the time. Yeah. You hit the backspace key and it goes back a page and you lose it all. So, in the views module, you'll see actually at the bottom there's a save and edit button in addition to the save button. So. Click save and edit, and it'll just take you back to the edit form. It'll save all your settings. So that's a good recommendation. Okay, so now you can see that there's rows. There's two rows, and the first row has two columns. The second row has three columns. We're going to make it one column, and we'll make width of the first column 100. Uh, you'll notice also that a second width popped up because we added a, another column to that first row. So let's split these to 50 50. Those are percentages. And those are percentages, and that's defined right up here. Right. And we're going to change the name of this one to the bottom. Okay. And we'll save. And we'll just double check everything. You can see there's two columns, 50, 50, one column, 100. And that's perfect. For now, we can ignore all the other settings on here. We can go back to that later if we want to. Okay, so you've actually you've just created your first panel page. Um, now let's take a break. Okay. Yeah, we got to swap the tape, everybody. Just uh, 30 seconds, real quick.